Let's talk now about how, for instance, you can help to build a distinctive town, confident town, uh, around a food culture. And I'd like to welcome Andy Spracklin, who I must say has got the best title I've heard for a long time, a placemaker and a restaurateur. Absolutely fantastic. Andy, thank you. Good, thank you so much. Um, let me just get myself sorted here. Um, good. Right, let's hope I get this working all right. Well, um, good afternoon, everyone. It's an absolute privilege, I have to say, to be invited to uh, speak to you this afternoon on a subject that is something that I've been exploring very much over the last um, few months, years, since I um, rather crazily... Um, uh, set up um, a restaurant, which is a Malaysian restaurant, um, with my business partner, Norman Musa, who is fast becoming a bit of a Malaysian celebrity. Um, alongside my existing work in, uh, in urban urbanism. Um, now, so um, I'm kind of exploring the relationship between the two, um, and there are very few uh, people out there who are exploring. There is one other person here I know somewhere um, today, um, Jane from Scent City, who's um, also exploring um, the relationship as well. Um, just in case you don't understand the word urbanist, I'm sorry, it's a little bit of a poncy name um, for um, an all-embracing way of describing people engaged in making great places. Um, whether you're an architect, marketeer, um, town centre manager, um, what have you. Um, so it's an all-embracing title. Um, I've um, actually headlined um, my uh, session with you today, Food Theatre. Why do I call it Food Theatre? Because um, there's, a, there's a phrase called retail theatre that um, retailers use. It's all about merchandising, making the... Um, their shop front exciting and the experience. We've heard words experience today, we've heard branding, and we've heard, heard all sorts of jargon flying around. Um, so I've created my own jargon, okay? So it's food theater. And um, just to illustrate a little bit of food theater, and, and you will be getting a completely different, I hope, perspective on things this afternoon, because I will be bringing in my international um, interests um, in this as well. I'm just going to show you a quick little something on the screen. Wherever you go in the world, the food of the street represents the identity of the people. Clues to culture, race and religion can be found in the local cuisine in one way demonstrating how life in the 21st century more than any other time has been determined by the migration of races and cultures. On an island off the northwest coast of Malaysia, multiculturalism is not an idealistic ambition, it is simply a way of life. Ethnic Malays, Indians and Chinese live side by side producing a melting pot in a city renowned for the fabulous food served up by roadside vendors. Forget about the holiday brochures and the tourist traps. Through this series, we'll show you what life is like for the ordinary people on the streets of the world. This is street food, and this is Penang. <laughs> say to that. That is um, what I'm talking about. Exciting, vibrant, it's the real um, food, okay? That is the food, the, the food of the people, the food of the culture, the food of their identity, the food of their place. And so the connections between food, place, 
identity, culture come together. And we often talk in creating distinctive places. Distinctive places are created when the expression and the culture of people, the quality of the place, um, and the overall culture, identity, and image that place comes together. And we may not like all those distinctive places. You might not be somebody who likes going to Blackpool, for example. But Blackpool has and is a distinctive place with an ide distinctive identity, a distinctive kind of feel that is related to people, place, identity. Now, um, my favorite places like Amsterdam, um, Berlin, they have particular characteristics about them that are, in my words, places with personality. Every place has some degree of personality. And if we can get in touch with that personality and use food to engage people in that place and that personality, and in so doing with food, then I think we're on to a very, very powerful winner. Um, because it's very similar when it comes to food, as we've just seen there. The relationship, um, Malaysia is an amazing um, melting pot of cultures, as, as was indicated in that film um, there, which incidentally was actually shown on um, Al Jazeera, um, uh, which again is a completely different, you wouldn't necessarily have expected that, but it is. Um, people, place, culture, identity all come together in food. We've been talking about, we've just seen a presentation from Stuart about places around the UK. We all know different foods relate to different um, regions, different places. We can talk about um, uh, the Eccles cake, for example. I'm based in, in Manchester, although I'm a, actually a, a southerner myself. Um, so, um, but we all know different kind of products, different foods relate to different <coughs> regions, different places. They come together and create distinctiveness. Um, here we are again, back in um, Penang, where we just saw um, Abdul here has been running his prawn fritter stall now um, for about, I think it's about six or seven generations, just serving up the best prawn fritters that you will ever eat in your life. Um, right there on a very, very unassuming little street stall in Panay. Um, Hanif here at the um, local um, market. These are taken from our book um, on Malaysian food, by the way. Um, and the, um, he's creating coconut milk and our lady there who's uh, serving up the chicken. But there, there's personalities, okay? There's an engagement going on when you go to um, a market. So. My proposition is, is that um, great places and great food um, equals um, places with personality. Um, and that's what I'm going to be focused on. And will you forgive me if I slightly um, get um, carried away? Um, this is a completely new perspective um, from my point of view. Um, there's my restaurant um, in, <coughs> in, um, in Manchester. Um, where we've tried to create a sense of identity and, um, and, and passion about food, where people do come together and relax, and we've created a, a brand um, called um, Ning um, that you can, you can search on the web for. Um, but closer to home, um, I've been working in Staffordshire recently. We have our street markets um, in many places. We're in a market town here, um, but very often, if we, look at, um, the, uh, if we look at our towns and cities as a whole, um, very often, unfortunately, our markets are not always selling the best products. They're either selling old hats, or old hat stuff, or quite frankly, tat. <laughs> um, this is um, in Newcastle under Lyme, where I've been working recently, um, trying to lift the sense of pride <laughs> Um, about their, their market. Um, it says it all, doesn't it? An image says a thousand words. 